Oh, Mori ora um, ki te whare, um, ki ngā tōhu o tēnei whenua, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki, um, ki te mana whenua, tēnei rohe, ngai tua hauriri, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, ko, ko wai au, um, he uri tēnei nō te rarawa, um, ko Lex Davis aho, um, ko Takatāpui aho. So, it is really nice to greet the tohu of, of the whenua. I, I do, I've, I've missed Christchurch, because um, I've only been up in Auckland. <laughs> I've only been up in Auckland for, for a term, so it's really wonderful to be here again tonight. Um, and it's really wonderful to be, to see familiar faces, um, and to, to be part of uh, the Grow Waitaha Whānau, just for another time. It's lovely to dip in, as Chris said. Um, and it's particularly important because this, this kaupapa tonight is very close to my heart um, and um, is, it's wonderful um, when you get to intersect with your work, with your passions and with your thinking. Um, so this is one of those moments for me, it's wonderful. Um, so, well, my, this, is, this was the brief that our, our rōpū um, and um, our Rōpū name was um, the, the Gay Avengers. Uh, we, we definitely, uh, we definitely want to make a difference. Oh, Kilda! <laughs> um, and we we want to be proactive in that. Um, so this was the brief. So rather than pick through it uh, in a logical process, I am an English and history teacher, so I'm going to take you on a bit of a storytelling journey um, because. That's where my heart lies, with storytelling, and that's where I want to reach you tonight with what I say. Um, Jordan and Gabrielle have done a tremendous job of bringing the scholarship, bringing the thinking, bringing the frameworks, the research, the hard data, and, the, and I mean hard data as in statistics, but hard data as in hard to read. Um, so I'm going to leave that to him. So my job is to go looking out at busy school leaders, to go snap and go, okay, I can talk again with some authenticity um, because I am going to go through this same journey in my school and I am starting way behind where I'd like to be. Um, so I'm, yeah, I just want to make common cause with you right from the start. I was reading this um, novel on the plane today and it's a wonderful um, piece of work from a, a Gujardini, Gujardini um, woman and from the Gujardini mob in Australia. And her name's Deborah Dank. And she was making sense of who she was and where we're going through story. And that's a common refrain you'll hear if you've ever heard me talk. And you'll, you'll hear this come up in my presentation. Because we are our stories. And stories sit in many places and talk us into our place. So not only do they help us understand who we are, but they help us to find, locate, change, and be in the spaces. So I just want you to hold in your heart that idea of the power of narrative um, um, through this corridor tonight. And just to make sure that I don't tangentially blabber on, I need to make sure that I do have a few folk help, foci um, and I just wanted to reflect on the power of this um, tapa toru toa, this powerful triangle. And it is to examine the relationships of the school of the individual kind of activist slash teacher. And now that might be a teacher, it might be a student, because we've certainly got some incredible activists we'll hear from. And it's also just to think about the community and organisations that we deal with day in and day out as schools. So when it's the, the connection, the relationship, and the tension between these three things that I just wanted to reflect on before to give some context around a really teachery background and a really um, school background. Um, and when one side of the triangle is pulling really strong in the waka, but the others don't, I just want to see that there's been, a, there's been some mismatch. And, I'm 43, which is about 120 years in gay years, so um, 
I, I'm entering my 20th year of teaching and I've, I've, I've ran around and done quite a few different jobs at a policy level, um, working as a PLD facilitator and as a school teacher and leader. So um, part of that has been being an activist, out and out. Um, and where I was strong as an individual, sometimes the other two things worked against me. Way back in 2002, there was a television news program um, called Queer Nation, and they wanted to do a piece on schools. Now, if you, if you remember Queer Nation, um, it was a tabloid kind of short story program, and they said, we'd love to come and talk to you. And I was like, yes, I'd love you to come and talk about what it's like being gay in school. So I went to my, my senior leadership, they were horrified. <laughs> what? You what? You want what? You want television? So after lots of negotiation, I was not able to show the logo. I was not able to show the colours of the school. I was not able to be named as working at a school. Um, I had to do it out of school hours. There would to be no no one else around. So it was an interview in a in a you know how dark schools are when they they don't have their kids in. It, it felt really, I felt really disappointed. So all of this enthusiasm was not, as an individual, wasn't backed up by my school. And I had the opportunity of going in 2011, going to the, the Asia Pacific Out Games, and there was a research conference. And that's where I really started deep diving into stats, uh, where I met the um, Youth 2000 survey and Matthias, Matthias, sorry, and where, the focus of, of that conference was on gender, and that was something that I hadn't met in my life experience, my lived experience. So when I say I'm he, him, ear, I'm standing as part of the of our rainbow community, but I'm an ally of our gender diverse um, well, our, our gender diverse people because that's not my lived experience. So in this games there was the first time that I was really pushed to consider cultural and, and gender challenges. So what happens when, um, when the community and the organisations are, are pulling really hard but I get no traction with, as a school from my school or an individual, is that my school begrudgingly allows me to go and be part of the PPA Rainbow Task Force and we designed what we thought were great, great workshops. And one of my workshops was, or a couple of them, were here in Christchurch. And I got to stand up and talk about the rainbow community and education, and I felt that it was a one-off. People weren't expecting me, they didn't really understand what I had to say, and I don't think that there was a follow-up. So although it was really good to get foot in the door, without the school, um, it was, I don't know, it, wasn't, it was never pointless, but it was really difficult. And each time I had people come up and saying, oh, I'm so glad, here's my personal experience, here's what I've learned, here's why I'm afraid. Because um, there were some very hostile school, school audiences. I went to a great conference in the NACWT in the UK, and I was feeling wonderful. And I was feeling buoyed by my community. We went out and to a cafe and a group of school students tried to kick in the door um, yelling homophobic slurs. So there's, just when you think you're hitting one side of the triangle, along comes the other one and gives you a boot. So what happens when the school is behind you but you, you don't have your community around? An example was with Dee. Dee was an amazing um, trans woman in crowd um, Wahini Tua. We wanted her to engage in her birthright, her tikanga, and she was, um, she gave our call. She called our students on um, through a poor fitting, and some of our parental groups didn't, didn't like that at all, and they formally complained to the school. That was probably a really low moment for me, because in that moment, we had gone as a school, we'd love to put you in this position. And the thought that she wasn't going to be safe made me feel sick. 
Luckily, we had the support belatedly of our mana whenua. You know, this is what we should have done first. You know, we, we knew they were supportive of us using um, Porphyry as a learning experience, but we should have done that beforehand. Um, you, know, you know, and luckily she didn't know any of this happened, um, but we had some really difficult conversations, <coughs> arguments at the board level and at um, complaint level. So that was really powerful learning for me. This is Andre. Andre represents what happens when all three of the sides of the triangle pull together for me. Um, and Andre, oh, Andre has allowed me to show his picture, but Andre was the first student that we made sure our school was safe while he was transitioning. And that was, that was almost 10 years ago. And it was such a powerful privilege to be walking alongside him in his journey. And it was hard because I needed my principal to say, yes, let's do some professional learning. I needed my board to back me and to say, well, if, if this happens, then we need this to happen. You know, um, there were lots of reflections and we needed the support of his family and we needed the support of external organisations to keep him safe. And that was incredible. And more reflections is LGBTQIA+. Plus. Our alphabet keeps growing. You know, we are the alphabet mafia, yo. <laughs> And I make no apologies for that growth. Because, you know, oh, I don't know what to say. Cool. I understand that. Keep learning. Because every time that alphabet gets longer, it means that we are recognising, that we are including, that we are giving voice, that we are listening to the stories of another group, of another person. So that's what I want us to take away with us tonight, is that behind all of this research, behind the, the statistics, are uh, lots of people. And we are complex, you know? I was, um, <coughs> I, I fuck a Papa Māori up to Te Rarawa, up at the very far north, and for so long, my cultural and my um, sexual identities were, were separate. Give me a space where I can bring them together. And it was not too far long ago where I actually learned, yeah, I have a, I have a space, I have a tūranga waiwai as a Māori gay male. And that is incredibly important because we are complex and we are amazing. Um, intersectionality might be a term that you've heard of and that just speaks to how all of the parts of our, our identities can pull together, you know? I'm, I'm gay, I'm Māori, I like wearing couches as blazers. Um, <laughs> I, love, I love Auckland, but I hate it. Oh, that traffic. So, you know, um, we, I guess that the, the privilege of, of, of being older and of having um, this type of professional lived experience is that you can create space for others. One of the ways in which I was so privileged to be able to do this um, through CORE was to do a research project, project called Kōtato Tēnei. Um, we got to take away a group of Takatāpui students um, and take them away to a Wānanga um, at Living Springs. And we just gave them a space to be. We fed them. We fed, you know, um, Taha Tinana, Taha Henengaro, Taha Wairua. We did Kapaka, we did, we, make, we carved Ponamu, we had, in, uh, we had Inside Out in, we had um, Kuia and Komatua to share knowledge with them. But most importantly, we had a space where we could listen to them. And we did that using, you can read it if you'd like, some research methodologies, just to make sure that we gave them some space, and legit gave them some space, not just, you know, tell us something and then talk about yourself again for 20 minutes. So, 
If you could scroll down to Mana, please. Mana was a gender diverse rangatahi. And they were able just to share what that meant for them. Now, you can read about what they, they said. They enjoyed um, connecting to queer, indigenous whakapapa. They were really bright. They researched things. Um, and I learned so much from mana. You know, um, if you want to think of ako and tuakana tainā, I step back into the tainā space. You know, I have so much to learn because that's not, that's not me. It's not my lived experience. And you have to humble yourself because magic happens. Magic happened on the Wananga because Mana was able to bring their dad. They had a breakthrough and it still moves me incredibly to think of the two of them going on a little little hikoi around Living Springs because Mana's dad had taken the time to listen to them as well. And that is the power of creating a space, of sharing a story. Yeah, um, proudest moment of the Wananga. Um, oh, thanks. Lovely assistant. <laughs> I know, I know, I know I'll, I'll, I'm going over time, so I just want, if you like, that represented to me what was my responsibility, but also my opportunity. Because I had the resource and the positional authority and the organisational capability to do something. And I guess when I look at the incredible resource that sits in front of me today, that's what I think. Because, and that's why we would love to talk to our school leaders, to our leaders of the future, to our board members, because you have so much space and you have the power to create that space and that is extraordinary um, and that's why we decided that we wanted to focus our efforts for you and with you. Now, um, that's how we came to this research, um, or oh, one of the way, one of the reasons. Because we know when we pull together, when we create frameworks and spaces, you know, it's real tough. Um, if you don't already know some gender diverse students in your school, look a little harder and they're there. Okay? Um, or if you can't see them, they're coming. <laughs> and they know who they are, you'll see that. You'll see um, that they are coming ready or not. So rather than rather than wait to for that to happen, we thought we'd shift into a really proactive space. And you'll see through the amazing work of the Potama and the research that we don't want to just uh, push you into it or cheer you into it. We want to support you with some well researched, with some local expertise. This is the incredible thing. Um, because it's, 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 it's about here, and it's about now. So, all of, all of those things that I reflect on, and I might have found difficult in the past, um, I'm in a position to sweep them away now too. I'm, I'm big enough and ugly enough to, t to take the hits, to, t to have the hard conversations, to um, push the barriers, to kick the doors down, and to put the money where the mouth is. Um, and I'm tremendously excited and as I said to you before, I've got to do that. Um, and I'll be joining you in this journey in my school, albeit a little further away. So, I have to end with whakatauki because you do. So, e hara taki toa, e te toa, takatahi, e ngari he toa, takatini. Our strength is not made from us alone, but made from many. So, find strength in each other tonight and look at who's around you, um, because they will be the people that you can turn to in your continuing work. Kia ora. Kia ora.